The United Nations Security Council is meeting for the first time on Russia's buildup of troops near Ukraine's borders. As the council convened, the Russian ambassador immediately objected to holding the meeting at all, accusing Americans of stirring up, quote, unfounded accusations. He says there are no Russian troops in Ukraine. The U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Linda Thomas-Greenfield, maintained the meeting is necessary. We have had numerous meetings, uh, over 100 meetings over the course of the past few weeks, uh, both with uh, Russian officials and in consultations with our European and Ukrainian colleagues. All of these meetings have been in private. We think it's now time to have a meeting in public. You've heard from our Russian colleagues that we're calling for uh, this meeting to make you all feel uncomfortable. Imagine how uncomfortable you would be if you had 100,000 troops sitting on your border uh, in the uh, way that these troops are sitting on the border with Ukraine. The U.N. meeting comes ahead of a planned call between U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and Russian Foreign Minister Segre Lavrov on Tuesday. A senior Biden administration official says the U.S. and its allies have identified key people President, in President Putin's inner circle that could be sanctioned if the Kremlin decides to invade Ukraine. Joining us now from Ukraine is CBS News foreign correspondent Holly Williams. Uh, Holly, your, your coverage has been tremendous. Uh, your report this morning about lawyers and marketing executives, everyday Ukrainians joining these defense units in preparation for what could be an invasion, really tells people the state of things there in the country. Meanwhile, here in New York, the U.N. Security Council is meeting, uh, has met already. What can you tell us about that gathering? Uh, and also, what can we expect in the upcoming talks between Blinken and Lavrov? Well, Tony, I think that there was every indication ahead of time that the U.N. Security Council meeting was going to be confrontational. Um, the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Linda Thomas-Greenfeld, said on Saturday, we're not going to be distracted by their propaganda and we're prepared to respond to any disinformation. Um, that's some pretty straight talking. Uh, as you just said, Russia attempted to, to hold this behind closed doors so that we wouldn't know what was going on. We wouldn't know what was going on. We wouldn't hear, uh, hear what was said. They were defeated in that by a vote within the Security Council. The Russian ambassador has, a, ha, ambassador has accused the U.S. of trying to, quote, whip up hysterics. And remember, of course, that despite those roughly 100,000 Russian troops massed along Ukraine's border, Russia maintains that it has no plans uh, to invade Ukraine. Um, I think what the U.S. is really trying to do at this meeting is ram home a point that they've been making consistently for weeks now, and it's this. The U.S. says this is not a regional dispute. This is not an argument between two neighbours 5,000 miles from the US. This is about a sovereign country, an independent country, a young democracy, and protecting that country, but also the international order. Um, as for that meeting between, between Blinken and Lavrov, it's really the latest in a series of efforts to try and solve uh, this crisis uh, with diplomacy. Uh, they met earlier this month in Geneva. Uh, the, the Russia is making demands of security guarantees to try to defuse this crisis, including the rolling back of NATO troops from Eastern Europe and a ban on Ukraine joining NATO. Um, the U.S. responded to those demands with a written response um, that hasn't been made public, but, but we know from their public statements that both the U.S. and NATO say that those demands uh, are simply things they cannot agree to. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is scheduled to talk by phone with Putin later today. Uh, what do we know about uh, the UK's warning uh, to Putin going into this conversation? So the UK is definitely beginning to talk very tough on Russia. Uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson warned Vladimir Putin uh, to take a step back from the brink. Also, the UK says that it is working on bringing in new legislation, new laws that will allow it to, to enforce tougher sanctions against oligarchs, so wealthy Russian business people, um, that are linked to the Kremlin. And remember, Russia, uh, the UK has been a huge haven for Russian money over the years. And we've had an almost immediate response from the Kremlin, the spokesman saying that that was an attack uh, on business. That certainly sounds like they're pretty worried about that. We're also expecting a visit from Prime Minister Boris Johnson to Ukraine tomorrow. Um, and we understand that the British government is also considering sending more troops and military hardware to Eastern Europe to try and bolster defences there.
Holly, you met with some Ukrainian soldiers over the weekend. How do they feel about this conflict? And did you get the sense that they think an invasion is imminent, despite hearing those words over the weekend from the president there in Ukraine? You know, Jerika, they weren't actually soldiers. Some of them were ex-soldiers. Some of them were veterans. Mm -hmm. But they're all volunteers, uh, all from Kiev, the Ukrainian capital, people who say they will go out and fight um, if Russia attacks their country um, or, uh, or, or invades. You know, I think that people can look at the same information and come to different conclusions. So you have that with the U.S. and Ukraine. You know, the U.S. is saying, well, you know, an invasion could be could be imminent here, and Ukraine is saying, well, we're not ruling out an escalation, but, you know, but let's not panic. And I think you get the same thing when you talk to Ukrainians. Some people think that an invasion could be imminent. Other people are saying, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Perhaps that's less likely. I think what is clear, though, when we talk to Ukrainians uh, across the board, is that nearly all of them are very worried about Russian aggression because mm -hmm. they've been living with it for years. Yeah. yeah, Holly, as we watch footage there of those citizen soldiers training, uh, you know, Russia says it has no plans to invade, but they've certainly set the table for an invasion, so one wonders. Uh, Holly Williams for us in Ukraine, uh, terrific work there. Thank you very much.